And now we're going to create some screens. When the project is created, screen one is created by default. Also in the tasks folder um, by default, the power on task is going to send you to screen one. So let's go ahead and add some labels so that we kind of know what we're looking at. We're going to use multilingual text. Um, it's got more font options than the um, regular text object. Basically all you can do with the text object is change the size and the color. But with the multilingual text you can choose the font if you want. This. Uh, we're going to change the font size on our object to 36. And then we're going to expand it out here. Let's delete this text object there. Um, we can center this within the screen from the alignment. Center along screens horizontal. And then we click over here into the text field to edit the text. We're going to label this first screen as our digital inputs and outputs. Okay, it looks like I was actually supposed to choose 48. There we go. And we can create a copy of this. Copy. Paste. Let's move this down. Let's make this smaller. We're going to choose 22. We're going to change the text to inputs. Make another copy. Label for outputs. Paste again. We're gonna. This is the first input. Paste. Move. X one. So this is all our labels. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and align some stuff so we can make these straight across. And let's align these vertically so they will get centered. And these guys got centered and we can make these line up across as well. Now they're aligned nicely. And now we're going to put in some bit lamps to show the state of the inputs. This is the bit lamp shortcut. These are your common objects. This is the common object toolbar. And let's place a bit lamp. And we want to use an image. So we're going to change the style from generic square to uh, use the picture library. And uh, when the picture library is used, we get to select an image. You can click these uh, guys here, and we get to choose an image. I'm just going to use the first one. Um, there's a few different options here. By using the picture library and choosing the off image, it automatically selects a corresponding on image. We can go look at that. And so this is what it looks like when it's on, versus that's what it's going to look like when it's off. So we'll just click cancel. Now we need to assign it the address and so the address let's click in here is going to be x0. Slot 0 channel 1 input input coil 0. And then we're going to copy this one and paste it again and this is going to look at the input for uh, coil 1. We can just 
type in here. You don't have to go into the tag selection window every time if you know what the address is. And let's align these guys. Let's actually just align it under the inputs. And now we're going to add a toggle button so that we can toggle the outputs under advanced objects, buttons, bit action, toggle bit. Let's place that here. This toggle button will toggle whatever tag address you associate with it, but by default it's not going to change appearance, so we're going to turn on the feedback. We're going to allow a feedback tag to be specified so that it will change the appearance, so it'll be either off or on. We're going to change the on text to be on, and I like to make it bold so it's just a little um, easier to see. Let's assign the tag. So this is output 4, so we're going to assign it to tag All right, yeah, slot 1, output coil 4. And we're just going to copy this, I'm going to use some keyboard shortcuts here, and paste it into the feedback, feedback here. And then we're going to make a copy of this guy. and change the address to uh, output 5. And so you can edit these in the tag name and also in the address. And then let's uh, get this all aligned prettily and make sure that everything is still aligned along the middle. And this is our display for our inputs and outputs.